Hey guys, this is Brother Ray Jones with the First Church of God in Princeton, West Virginia. I want to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. I hope you're having an amazing week, and I'm very grateful that you're taking time to share some time with us to be a part of this study together. We encourage you to let us know you're watching. Feel free to hit one of those emoji buttons or to uh, just put in the comments, I'm here, I'm watching, glad to be a part. We're honored that you are a part of this with us this evening. Uh, we are still, of course, in summertime, and summertime gives us the great opportunity to do several amazing things in church life. One of the things we have done already is Vacation Bible School. By the time that this lesson comes to you, and uh, Vacation Bible School will be a part of the history books, but uh, it is being pre-recorded, and you can enjoy, again, some of these wonderful decorations that have been worked on so very, very hard, and they've just done an amazing job uh, transforming our sanctuary to get it ready for the, the week that we've had with Vacation Bible School. So we appreciate those volunteers and all the good work that they did and all the good results that are gonna come from that ministry effort. Uh, tonight, before we get into our Bible study, we wanna take just a moment to pray together. And as we're praying, uh, want to let you know we want to continue to pray for sister B shoemate she is uh, she suffered a stroke some time ago and was in the hospital for quite some time in Charleston she is being uh, transferred down to uh, here in Princeton at, for rehabilitation and we're grateful for that and we want to continue to pray for B shoemate uh, we want to be praying for Naomi ball she has some health issues that are going on and they are finalizing a diagnosis for her and we just want to be remembering her in our prayers we want to continue to pray for several who are uh, battling COVID uh, a few of the pastors that we know one in the area is Pastor Marvin Mills we want to continue to lift him before the Lord please continue to pray for David Radford from and for uh, Gerald Rudd both of them are friends of mine and uh, they are improving but we need to continue to lift them up before the Lord in prayer Perhaps there are other needs that you have tonight. We welcome you to message those in to us. I can assure you, um, while we may not voice each of these on the video, uh, we are looking at those requests and we're being careful to pray for them. So uh, please let us know about those requests. We do wanna be praying with you and for you about those needs. So let's take some time and pray together this evening. Lord, thank you again for your grace and mercy today. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to gather up in this place uh, virtually, Lord, to be able to share together in this study and to be able to learn and to grow together through this, this venue and this platform. We pray, Father, for your blessing upon our time as we learn and grow together tonight. Uh, but Lord, we ask that you'd be with each of the requests that, have been, that are represented in our, our church body. We thank you that B is improving, and we pray you'd continue to touch and bless her and keep her close to you. Uh, we pray you'd be near Ted and comfort him, and Lord, be with their family and just draw them closer to you through this time. We ask, Lord, that you would be with uh, Naomi. We pray for your hand of healing upon her body. We pray you touch her and make her whole, well, and complete. Lord, please continue to be with Marvin Mills. We pray for your hand of healing upon him. Uh, we ask that you'd be near his family and, Lord, give them strength and comfort through this difficult time. We thank you, Lord, for the improvement for Gerald and for Dave. And we just pray, Father, you'd continue to have your hand of healing upon both of them. And we give you praise in advance for that. And, Lord, for the many other needs that are represented in this place, we pray, Father, that you would uh, hear our prayers and that you'd have your will and way in each one. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and say together. Amen and amen. Thank you for taking time to pray together tonight. Tonight, as we continue our study on the fruit of the Spirit, we're going to be looking at the next fruit of the Spirit. We're going to be talking about faithfulness. And uh, two main texts that we'll be looking at is in Galatians, the fifth chapter, uh, verse 22, where this is listed. And then in Matthew chapter 25, we're going to be highlighting a parable that Jesus told there. So again, let me remind us, we've been talking about how if the Spirit of God truly dwells in us, which He does as we are saved and as we are sanctified and we ask the Spirit to have complete control of our lives and to fill our lives, He begins producing in us these nine things. 
Uh, Paul refers to them as the fruit of the Spirit. We've covered several of them. We've already talked about love, and joy, and peace, and patience. We've talked about kindness and goodness. And tonight we're going to talk about the next one, and that is faithfulness. Faithfulness, as a, uh, as a definition, uh, to define it would be this. It is reliable, dependable, trustworthy in matters great, small, and everywhere in between. Someone who is faithful is trustworthy. They are, um, they're there, they are loyal. And this, this idea or this fruit of faithfulness is something that God wants to produce in and through us as we are filled with His Spirit. Now, as we consider this tonight, let's begin with this one simple truth. God is faithful. Uh, the Word of God declares that very clearly to us. In Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, the ninth verse, we read these words. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Throughout the Old Testament and the New, we find out one of the attributes of God is He is faithful. He is faithful trustworthy psalm 36 5 says this your mercy o lord is in the heavens your faithfulness reaches to the clouds again the word of the lord in the old testament underscoring for us god is faithful now in the new testament we find this same truth affirmed over and over again one reference to that is in first thessalonians the fifth chapter beginning at verse 23 uh, Paul writes to the Thessalonians and he says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Paul is challenging and encouraging the Thessalonian believers to give themselves completely to the Lord to live lives separated from the world um, and to live their lives holy unto God, to sanctify themselves. And God will do that sanctifying work in us. He is faithful to do that. Now, not only is God faithful, but we know that Jesus himself modeled faithfulness for us. In Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, we read these words. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 are the verses that come immediately after what we understand to be in the Scripture as Hebrews chapter 11, and that's the honor roll of faith. And of all of those faithful people that uh, the author of Hebrews highlights for us, he then starts out in chapter 12 saying, hey, we've got all of these wonderful faithful witnesses who are examples to us. And the most important example is Jesus Christ, who's the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is faithful. Now, the Spirit of God produces this fruit of faithfulness in our lives. Galatians 5.22, we read, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and then this next one that we really want to highlight tonight is faithfulness. In other words, as we live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit day in and day out, this thing called faithfulness is another attribute or fruit that's going to produce, going to be produced as we live. Um, we need to understand when it comes to this thing called faithfulness. One of these days, we are all going to give an account to God for our faithfulness or lack thereof. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, Jesus told this parable of how uh, 
this guy who who uh, owned all of the these resources entrusted the resources to some of his servants he gave some talents uh, to di three different ones to one he gave five to another two to the other one and he expected them to steward those resources while he was gone and if you read through that parable in its entirety you'll find out that the one who was given five took his five talents and invested them and doubled them the one who was given two did the same thing but the one who was given one talent he he got afraid he um, he buried his talent and he just waited until his Lord returned and when his Lord returned he uh, simply was going to give back the one talent that he had been entrusted and he thought that that was going to be okay well the way Jesus tells this story one day that king that Lord did come back and he wanted the stewards to give an account of what they had done with what he trusted them with the first two were able to look back and say uh, hey you know the first one in particular you've given me five I've uh, you've entrusted that to me I've done some things with it and look now it's become ten the second one was able to do the same the two that you've get, you've given me I've invested I've done something with it and it's turned into four and they gave an account and their Lord looked back at them and said his Lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your Lord that's what we want to hear at the end of time we want to stand before God and give an account of our faithfulness and, it, and the, the results of it are in part up to us I mean we have we get to impact that but really a lot of those results are up to God but what we have to have done is we want to be able to say we've done our part with what God's entrusted to our care and we're going to give an account but that third servant, if you read down a little further in Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 26, he who had done nothing, he was not faithful in his stewardship of what God had entrusted to his care. And the account that he gave to him was met with this response. His Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I've not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent that was given, that was given to him and give it to him who had 10, has 10 talents. For everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, what I want to highlight in this, again, is that we're going to have to give an account to God of our faithfulness of what he's entrusted to our care. And it, again, it's not a contest to see who can produce the most. It is, have we done our part to invest what God has given to us? And quite frankly, when you go back and look in that parable, the, that, that Lord said to that servant, even who had one, if you would have simply put it in the bank and let it draw interest in a savings account, that would have been at least a little bit more than burying it and putting it in the ground. So faithfulness can be expressed in different ways, and we're not always going to get the exact same results. Some may produce more as a result of their faithfulness, but we all need to put forth faithful efforts in, and we're going to give an account of that one day. So with that in mind, I, I want us to think about some areas where we need to express our faithfulness to God. As God is uh, producing the, this fruit of faithfulness in our lives through the Spirit's power, faithfulness needs to be expressed first and foremost to the Lord God Almighty. In Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 32 and 33, we read these words. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. 
But whoever denies me before men, him I also will deny before my Father who's in heaven. Jesus is highlighting here the importance of us putting our faith in God and remaining faithful to him. We're to uh, continue to confess him before others. In the way that we live our lives, we are to be giving testimony to the fact that we are Christians. And we don't need to be ashamed of that. Uh, there are a whole lot of people out there who are living in various ways. And as one person put it to me one time, there's no shame in their game, okay? They are openly displaying their sin. My friends, let us openly and faithfully express and show our love for God. We are to be faithful to God. And we need to demonstrate that in how we live. And we need to express that to him by confessing him uh, by, in word and in deed before a lost and dying world. Another area where we need to be faithful has to do with our family. Um, to those who are married, there's very specific instruction in the word of God. That is a sacred relationship. It is designed by the Lord to be a relationship between one man and one woman committed until death parts them. That's God's original design. And if you're going to enter into that sacred relationship, then there's some very important instructions on how to express faithfulness in that. Um, in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, the 22nd verse, there's instructions to wives to submit to their own husbands as to the Lord. Now, hear me clearly as I say this. To you ladies who are married, uh, you are to honor your husband. Uh, that is expressing faithfulness in the marriage as you honor him. Now, it, it uses the word specifically submit there. But if you read the context of that, you will see that husbands and wives are told to submit to one another. This is not an instruction that says the wife must do everything the husband says. That is a total misrepresentation of what Paul is trying to get across. What he's teaching here is that husbands need to be honored and respected, and they need to know they're honored and respected, and wives are to express that uh, as a part of their faithfulness to the marriage covenant. Now, the wives are to be respected and honored as well. But what is a part of a man's DNA is he really needs to know that um, probably in more significant ways. And Paul highlights that when he's telling wives to be submissive or to be honoring and respectful of their husbands. He then goes on, ladies, I know you're, you're thinking, well, there's something more in that scripture and I'm gonna get to that next, so take note of this, okay? He then addresses the husbands and he says to the husbands, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Gentlemen, if you're going to be married, if you're going to have a wife, you need to express your, you need to be faithful in that marriage and you need to express that faithfulness by loving your wife so much and so clearly and so passionately that she knows beyond the shadow of any doubt that, she, that you love her. Uh, and gentlemen, we are called, if we're going to be husbands, to love our wives like Christ loves the church. That is sacrificial love. Um, now, that's not just some sappy Valentine's Day romance type love, although that can be a part of the marriage relationship and should be. But the kind of love that Paul's talking about here is deeper and more significant than just romantic love. It is sacrificial love. It is love that compels you to lay down your life, just like Christ laid down his for the church. Now, the, these specific instructions to husbands and wives in Ephesians 5 is wives are to submit, honor, respect, and husbands are to love. Does that mean that uh, the wives don't have to love and the husbands don't have to honor and respect? No, absolutely not. Paul assumed that women understood that they were going to express love for their husbands. 
um, because quite honestly, that just comes a little more natural to, to women. Um, and he also assumed that the husbands are going to respect and honor their wives. And all of those things need to be done by both parties. But the, the point I'm trying to make is this. We need to express this fruit of faithfulness when it comes to family relationships. Husbands and wives, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to be faithful to one another. You're committed to one another. And you need to stay faithful and express faithfulness in that committed relationship. That means that you don't cheat on one another. That means that uh, you date one another. You're not dating anybody else, okay? I, I know that should be a given, but I'm just making a point. You, you are to honor one another and to continue to remain faithful and express that faithfulness throughout your days. Now, another way that that faithfulness is expressed in family life is taught in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. It has to do with parents and children. Listen to these words. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Uh, part of this faithfulness in being expressed in family life has to do with parenting our children and children honoring mom and dad. Particularly when children are in the household, um, we are to honor our parents. We're to respect them. We're to even obey them. Now, that is obeying them as they are leading us in the things that are of God. Um, and in, in the best case scenario, where you have a mom and a dad in the home who are striving to follow the Lord and raise their children in that nurture and admonition, children very much have some great role models there to follow and to submit to. But even at that, and children, I know, I get it, if your kid's at home watching this, um, I, you think your parents are dumb as dirt, I get it, but you're gonna find out as you get older, they know a whole lot more than you wanna give them credit for right now. And you need to honor them, especially as they lead you in the ways of the Lord. But moms and dads, understand there's some instruction here for us as well. Paul specifically addresses the fathers, but this applies to moms as well. Don't provoke your children. Don't just um, make raising them unnecessarily difficult. Don't put more on them than God's putting on them. And instead, train them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Um, moms and dads, we have a great opportunity to impact future generations by how we raise our children. And my friends, especially in this day and age, these kids need mom and dad loving each other and loving them and training them in the right way to live. So faithfulness is expressed in the family life. Um, it's expressed to God as expressed in the family. It also needs to be expressed in the community of faith. This fruit of faithfulness can and should be practiced and evident through your life when it comes to the local church body that you're a part of. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 24 and 25, we have these words of instruction. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. As Christ's followers, we need to be faithful to a local body of believers, to a church, to a congregation. Now, I know that when you get saved, the church that you ultimately become a part of is God's church, the universal church of God. But a local congregation you need to be a part of a local congregation of believers that's striving to express or to be a, a microcosm, if you will, a micro representation of that larger body. We need one another. And 
the author of Hebrews says we should not forsake assembling together, but we should do it even more as we see the day approaching. We need to get together with God's people. We need to worship together. We need to hear the word of the Lord together. We need to fellowship together. And we need to be faithful in expressing our faith in God uh, by getting together with a church body. It's through the life of a local congregation that you can get trained and encouraged and blessed. It's through that, that church life that you can find the inspiration and the encouragement to deal with the things that you're dealing with and then get equipped to go out of the church walls and to reach out to a lost and dying world. This fruit of the Spirit that we call faithfulness should be expressed in the community of faith. One last one and we'll wrap this up for tonight. This spirit or this fruit rather of um, faithfulness needs to be expressed in our service to a lost and dying world. I highlighted that or hinted at that just a moment ago, but let, let's look at the scripture. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning of verse 13, Jesus said this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill can't be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but instead on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. What Jesus is talking about here is that we as his followers, as his children, we are to be faithful to go out into a lost and dying world and express the goodness and the love and the mercy and even the justice of God before that lost and dying world. We're to be salt and, earth, uh, salt and light in this lost world. We're to be the salt of the earth. We're to bring flavor, God's original tastiness, if you will, to this otherwise bland and lost world. We're to let the light of God shine through us in this very, very dark world. And... Um, I know none of us have to look too far to see that there's a lot of darkness out there. God is expecting us to be faithful, we who have received the light of Jesus' salvation and his grace and mercy. We're to let his light and love and in life shine through our lives so that others can see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Now, we don't do good works to get saved, but we do these good things because we're grateful God has saved us. And we don't do these good things to get a pat on the back or to lift ourselves up. But we do these things to point people to the eternal Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we live out faithfulness in our lives, both privately and publicly, a lost and dying world will see that. And hopefully want to have the life we have. That then gives us the opportunity of explaining to them how they can live this way by putting their faith in Christ as well. All my friends, of all the things that Christ wants to produce in us and that the Spirit wants to produce in us, faithfulness is one of them, and it is very, very important. God is faithful, and he's entrusted us um, and empowered us to be faithful ourselves, to be faithful to him, to be faithful to our families, to be faithful to his church, and to be faithful to express uh, his goodness and grace to this lost and dying world. So I hope faithfulness is being produced in your life. And if, if that's something that you're struggling with, then I encourage you to trust the Lord to help you develop that and again, by definition, that is reliable, dependable, trustworthy, and matters great, small, and everywhere in between. I hope this has been a blessing to you tonight. If this has blessed you, please pass it on to somebody else. And thank you again so very much for giving us the gift of your time. God bless you. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week.